Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast. And this is episode 27, and welcome. Uh, Tonight is much better uh, night than last night uh, because of the unfortunate tragedy that happened with uh, Kobe and his his daughter and and the other passengers uh, that were in the helicopter, you know. Again, prayers and condolences uh, to the for the families and them. But um, but today, you know, we move on. It's what life is about, and uh, we all experience this where we lose people, and it feels like it's the absolute end of the world. And life continues. You turn on the TV, and there's still TV shows, and people are still driving, and people are still going to work, and people are still going to school, and people are still making plans, and people are still going out to party and having celebrations and graduating. Life goes on. So, I try to keep that, you know, in perspective as far as with me. Um, I'm, I'm older now. I mean, well, I'm 53 years old. It's not really old. Back in the days, I probably would have been dead already. I think the life expectancy back in the days was like, 35 years old, <laughs> so 53, okay, I think we're at like, we're like, I don't know, 79, 80 now, uh, who knows, but, uh, except like, I have an aunt right now, I think she's 96, and she still drives, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, so you can't really, uh, you know, my mom passed when she was 68 years old, uh, lung cancer, she was a smoker, even though people, you know, pass from lung, uh, they get uh, lung cancer and don't even smoke, so, you know, there's no telling. There's no telling. I mean, how do how do we do? You know, worry about it. Worry about it every single day. And you know, I worry about it a lot. But you know, now my 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 children are older. They're grown. That they're, they're basically out the house. Well, almost. <laughs> my daughter's out the house, but she's in the army. So I don't know. She she's in Germany right now. So will she be back <laughs> after the army? I don't know. Uh, my son comes and goes. The only problem is every time he comes back, he brings another kid with him. So he's on number four right now. So he went, he left one time, came back with a with a with his girl and a kid. Went back out, came back with two. <laughs> so, but it's all good. It's all good. The doors are always open to the kids, you know. But you know, one of the things I always uh, prayed for and I always hoped for was that, you know, God forbid, if anything were to happen to me, I just want my kids to be grown and to be on their own and to be be able to stand on their own two feet and don't have to depend on me. I didn't want to leave anyone dependent on me. Um, right now, my biggest concern is my wife, you know, and my grandkids too, but they're good. They have their parents. So, you know, even if things are rough and, you know, they're still going to be fine. They'll, everybody will pick pick it up. And in time, everything will come together. You know, right now, Santana, uh, which is my oldest granddaughter, she's eight. She stays with us only because she's uh, she goes to school here. Um, the school district where we're at is a lot nicer than where they're at. And where they're at right now is temporary. So no sense in putting her in school there when their plans are to come this way so we have her in school and then in the summer she goes back with them but she goes with them every every weekend every friday we take her there and we pick her up sunday evening so we're good she, she has the best of both worlds you know so i'm cool so you know yeah so you know i live for them i live for all of them and uh um and it, it's a blessing it's a blessing to have family and to have kids and grandkids and you know some people don't have them but you know they have there's other qualities there's other things that you know, was given to them in life that, you know, maybe I don't have. So, you know, God finds a way of making everything fair for everyone. We just got to find it sometimes. Sometimes the blessings, we we don't know them. We don't see them. They're disguised or we kind of overlook them. You know, meanwhile, they're they're right in front of us. You know, people, you know, cry over this or cry over that and, and they overlook the fact that they're healthy or they cry over this and cry over that, but they realize that they have a family and they have kids and they have a home and they have a roof over their heads. And, you know, so, you know, I think as we get older, we think more about that. When we're younger, 
We really don't. We, everything we feel invincible. We feel like shit's always going to go up. It's always things are always going to get better, you know. And when you get older, you're like you start to look back more, you know. And, and that's the thing with life, you know. If you think about, it. so when you're young. You basically, you know, look towards the future a lot. You're always looking at what I'm going to do tomorrow, what I'm going to do when I grow up, or, um, you know, what kind of job am I going to go? Am I going to go to college? Where will I live? Where will I buy my first house, you know? And then you get to a certain age, and some people stop thinking about the future. Now they're thinking about the past, what I did. I did this. I accomplished this. My kids are grown. I raised my kids. Uh, I had great jobs. Uh, I uh, managed these freestyle artists. I owned these clubs, or I made this amount of money. That's what happens when we get to a, a certain age, you know. Uh, the key is, though, regardless of the age, is to always look forward. Always believe that there's other things. That there's other things in life. And the way I try to put this together in my head, think about it like this, right? So. Sometimes we look, we're like, okay, you know, I'm 50. Okay, we'll say 50. So I said, wow, so I have 50 years of, you know, of all this time. Now I'm 50 and now I need to start prepare, preparing myself for the grave. And no, because you got to check this out, okay? I'm counting 50 years from the day I was born, but I didn't do shit when I was born. <laughs> I laid there. And then when I was in my, you know, by my, my toddlers, I played. I freaking tumbled. I toddled. <laughs> and then when I became a kid, I just thought about, you know, going outside and playing and uh, dreaming of being whatever, astronaut or whatever the, the hell I was going to be. And then you're a teenager, you think about girls. If you're a girl, you think about boys, you know. You know, then you become a young adult and you, now you're starting to think about, you know, starting a business or, you know, working a good job or going out to the clubs. You know what I'm saying? So then you're 25 years old and you start feeling like an adult. So now, so let's count from 25 years old to now 50. I'm 53, but let, let's round it out, okay? So 50. That's 25 years. That, so I had from that day that I woke the hell up finally, which for me, that was actually the, the, the age. My son was born when I was 24, and I think that's when shit clicked. I came out of prison, had him, and that was it. And then I started moving forward. So <clears throat> you think from 25 to 50, that's 25 years. So from 50... Another 25 years of me being a hell of a lot smarter than I was when I was 25 years old, having a lot more access to technology than I had when I was 24, 25 years old, have a lot more connections. I got a little bit more money and, you know, I, I have a home and I'm independent. So now let's count another 25 years. What's that going to be? 75? 75 is not old, man. Not these days. Start looking at the people who are 75 years old. People start looking old and start getting old when they start going into their 80s. 75 years old, man. So we still got that 25-year hustle, you know? And a lot of us should be in a good position right now. Maybe not the best position, but a good position, you know, like a seesaw. Like where the seesaw is not, it's, it, hasn't, it hasn't fallen on either side. It's kind of, kind of balanced in the middle, you know? So now it's about trying to shift everything. You know, and then another thing that people think, oh, well, you know, if I make it at 75 and then I'll be too old to retire and enjoy it. No, man. I just told you my, my aunt's 96 years old. That's like another 25 years. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, another 20 years. That's a whole, like almost another freaking life lifetime. So you got that time. Yeah, you know, depending on how we take care of our health, you know, is the quality of how we're going to run with it. But, you know, but that's when you want to, you know, enjoy. That's when you want things to calm down. You want you want to be able to sit back and maybe take a trip and relax. If all you want to do is sit on your porch and, you know, or be on your boat on the lake or whatever, and that's all you want to do, then you should be able to do that in your in your twilight years, you know? So maybe, maybe you know, you're not going to want to hustle. You think now, oh, man, I'm going to be too, too tired. I'm not going to be able to do anything. Well, you know, or be too old for, you know, well, you might not want to do any of that. You might be content and say, hey, I kind of just want to chill. I just, I want to fish today. I want to go for a walk today. I want to sit on the beach today. I want to take a cruise this week. I want to go to Italy this month. I want to take a trip to Fiji Islands, <laughs> to the Fiji Islands. You know what I mean? So, you know, 
that's that's you know that's that's just the way you know we we look at things you know we we always think that we're too old i mean, i bet you anybody who was in their 30s started to feel old and thought about when they were 20 and say man i should have did this when i was 20 years old look at me i'm 35 i'm old now and then you turn 42 or 45 and you look back and you say damn 35 wasn't old at all. I was actually still, I was still young. I still had like my whole life, right? And then all of a sudden you become, you think you're old there. You're like, man, for damn, I had my whole life at 35. Now I'm 45. Damn, I'm old, man. I'm old. Then you turn 55 and you look back at that 45 and you're like, wow, I can actually call. I could have been called a kid still. At 45. I know it sounds weird, but it's true. Think about it. Put yourself in that place. Just think about it. So now I'm 53. Am I going to say the same thing when I'm 60? Or when I'm 65? Probably. So what I decided to do, and it's crazy because I figured this out just recently, like a few years ago. Like I think before I hit 50, I kind of, I caught on to this. And I said, you know what? I got to stop thinking that. I'm old because every time, every decade later, I look back and say, you know what? I wasn't old after all. And then when I hit 90, I'm going to look back and say, yo, 60 was young. Think about it. If you're, if you're 90 years old, 60 is going to look young. It's almost like you still have your whole life. From 60 to 90 is 30 years. 30 years. That's basically an entire lifetime. Like I said, you didn't really discover life until you're basically in, in your 20s. So figure 30 years from that. That'd be 50. You'll be back right where I'm at right now. <laughs> you know? So, so, you know, never think, you know, put age, man. Put age. Page, age was just created for us to keep track of shit. That's it. You know? But, you know, we can't we can't live like that. We have to, we have to continue to move on and continue to dream. Continue to dream. I think my biggest fear in life is not having the capacity to dream anymore. Is to not have any hope anymore. These are the things that really scare me. To be incapacitated. You know, to... You know, like I can't... I'm not that guy that wakes up in the morning and sits on the side of bed and stretches and say, Oh... What am I going to do today? Like, that does not exist. That that has never existed in my life. I'm dead serious. And it's not all about hustling for the for money. I, I brought this. I've said this to you guys before. I've done tons of stuff for no money. I go after the money to survive. But, man, the money is not my driving force. It really is. It's beautiful to get it. It just makes things a little easier. You don't have to worry about certain things, you know. You can help certain people. You can buy cool stuff, especially now so much technology and shit. You know, you want to get that new phone. Me, I love cameras, you know. I want to get a new camera. I want to get some lighting, huh? you know. I like that computer. I want, You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> and, you know, so you want to have the money to buy that stuff. But th- that's not, you know, that's a necessity, man. That's out of, you know... I want to get those tools. I want to get this or that. You know, it's it's cool, but I don't, you know, I want to have them, but I don't, I'm not hustling for them. I'm, instead, I'm hustling for happiness. I'm hustling for the ability to change the world in any way, capacity, even if it's a little portion of the world. Remember, when you're changing the world, doesn't mean you're changing the entire world. If you are doing something for homeless people in New York City, you're not changing the world, but you're changing somebody's world. You understand? Somebody's world is being is being changed. It's being altered, and it's because of you. But of course, we can't change the entire world. Now, you have people that like a Steve Jobs or Mark Zuckerberg, you know, people who created Apple and Facebook. 
Yeah, they pretty much changed the world. Okay? So in life, we get that. We have those people that, that come into our lives and, you know, and they change the world as a whole. But then there are those who change lives or change the world in, in, in sections. And those people are just as important. They're just not as recognized as some of these other ones. You know, so it's like the whole situation that's going on now. If you read on Facebook, you know, nine people died in a helicopter. Everybody's praising Kobe and his daughter. Okay, I understand. I'm not going to hate on those people. Yeah, I acknowledge it's other people that pass. And, but you got to realize this was a celebrity. Celebrities tend to almost have, almost be uh, like an extended family member. If you're a fan and you follow them or they've been in the limelight, it's like you know them. That's why when a, a celebrity can pass away, you know, people can cry. You're not going to cry for someone you don't know. They, it doesn't matter if they don't know you. People say, yeah, Kobe don't even know you're alive. Okay, you're right. He doesn't. But people know that he was alive. And people were fans. And people, they loved his personality. And they loved his game. You know, they, they just loved that, you know. Then people were out there trying to compare, uh, like the military. Oh, nobody's crying or nobody's praising you know about the military well sometimes we don't know sometimes we don't know but I'll tell you this every time somebody posts something about a soldier being killed man there's a lot of love a lot of people click but sometimes people just don't know it's not on TMZ it's not on CNN it's not on you know NBC News it's not on these things so we don't know unless it's a family member so for anybody to get heated because nobody, nobody's acknowledging the other people. It, it's like, yo, give them time. They don't know these people. They don't know who they are. Give it a minute. Give them a day. Like right now, now they're starting to post all the names and the pictures. I took my time. I made sure that I looked at every single face on that, uh, in that picture of, of all nine members. And I made sure I read their name and I pronounced them correctly. And I said my own little prayer for each and every one. That was me. That's how I did it. But I know who they are now. Now I see a picture. I didn't know who they were. We didn't even know how many people were on the on the on in, in the helicopter. So some people just gotta kinda get it together, man. It's like, you know, stop, you know, there's more important shit to do than, than beat people up over that, you know? Nobody say anything to me, don't get it wrong. <laughs> it's, I saw them attack somebody else, and I just thought it was kinda kinda messed up. It shouldn't have been like that. You know, give it a minute, man. You know, Michael Jackson died. The whole world came together. You know what? My mom died. Just with my family. You know, that's just how it is. My mom was a celebrity. You know what? She was a celebrity in my family, and that's all that mattered to her. When I go, I don't. I don't think the world's gonna miss me. I don't think there's gonna be a huge celebration, but my family will celebrate. I hope. <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying? But you know, celebrities, actors, athletes, speakers, musicians, presidents, you know what I'm saying? I don't know the president. You know, the president, I wasn't around when Kennedy was assassinated, but a lot of people died when he did. I wasn't around when Martin and Malcolm were assassinated. Maybe I would have cried. I wasn't I wasn't around. Michael Jackson passed. I was sad as hell. I didn't cry. I was in disbelief when Prince Prince died. I'm in the music business, realize this. If I'm in the music business, it means because I was influenced by by artists. That's usually how it starts. And growing up, you know, the Jackson 5 and the Osmonds were my artists. 
and Michael Jackson in particular. So when he passed it, it punched me in the face. Yeah, it was in disbelief. You know, and then you don't realize how special these people were until they pass. You know, that's that's what's crazy. You know, we start. You know, I've become fans with people. So many people after they have passed away. And it was so crazy. I'm so crazy. I, I've done this. I'll tell you one time. I used to box back in the days. Like I was, I was in my teens. I was, I was a contender. I was, I was shooting for the gloves. Um, they were supposed to send me to England for the Empire State Games, or I forgot which games it was. Was it Colgate? I forgot. But anyway, I was supposed to go out there and fight. Um, but I was. I used to geek out on the boxes. I forgot the history of a lot of them, but I studied you know, Ali Johnson. Um, uh, uh, all of them, man, you know, um, um, <laughs> I'm drawing a blank now, <laughs> but anyway, you get the idea, but, uh, and, and Dempsey, Jack Dempsey, so, what's so crazy is that I had a, a, a big autobiography, I don't know if it was an autobiography or biography of Jack Dempsey, this is so crazy, right, I'm in New York City, and I used to study these books. Like, I used to sit there and love. I just remember the feeling. I get that feeling now when I read stuff. I'm, I'm just, I love to read, and I read stuff that, that teaches me. And I remember reading and just getting into his world and learning everything about Jack Dempsey. And I, I like to see people fail and then get out of the failure. That, that's so fascinating to me. And, but this is so crazy, right? So I'm going to school. I believe I was still in high school. I believe I was still in high school. My dates could be screwed up. Who knows? I did drugs back in the day, so anything could be going on with my brain right now. But I remember, I believe I was still in school, and I was in the train, in the subway train. I remember it was the number seven train, because I was the one who went from my house into the city or wherever the hell I was going. I don't remember. I'm reading the book. Now, check this out. This is so crazy. I'm reading the book of Jack Dempsey, and I get to the end of it, Right? And when I read the last page, a lot of times I closed the book, I put it on my lap, and I kind of like, I absorb it. Because I know I finished this book. And it's almost like I'm waiting for the book to do something for me, like to anoint me or some shit. <laughs> you know, it's weird. I, I still do this today. Matter of fact, if you look in the back of a lot of my books, I write when I complete it, writing the book. It's the weirdest thing. <laughs> and if I read it twice, you'll see me right in there again, ready for a second time, da-da-da-da, that's just me, I'm weird, but this is what I'm getting at, so I get to the end of the page, I read the last paragraph, I close the book, I kind of let it soak in for a little bit, right, and I look up, and sitting across from me is a man, he has a newspaper, He's holding the newspaper. If you guys know the Daily News, you hold it up in the train. You can't even see the guy's face. You just see the paper. And in the back page, or was it? No, I think it was the front page. It said, Jack Dempsey dead at whatever the age was. Boom. Blew my mind. How crazy was that? So, of course, I went, I got the paper, and now I know this guy. I just read his entire life. I know, and now I know him. So what happens is I'm sad as hell. I'm sad as hell. This guy doesn't know who I am, but never know who I am. I wasn't even around during his heyday. I had to read it in the history books. I've seen some of the old school tapes now, like on YouTube, but... But I felt sad as hell. Like it was a family member. Because I got to know this dude. Not just his fights and how good he was. I learned about his tragedies. And I learned about his, his flaws. And I learned about his shortcomings. And I learned about all these things that really shaped this dude into a real human being. And, and that's what makes us connect with them. It's not always... The, the great stuff that we know about them, but a lot of times it's also the not so great stuff, the stuff that 
proves to us that they're human beings. So, so when there's a celebrity or someone famous in whatever capacity who passes away and you want to cheer them on or you want to, you know, pray for them and you want to post them and you want to send condolences and and you want to cry, you know, just do it, man. Just do it because you know them. You know them. So you 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 deserve that. You 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 you're entitled to that. You you're entitled to mourn for someone that you don't even that doesn't know you cuz I'm not even going to say that you don't even know. You do know. That's why you're so sad. Anyway, okay guys. Thanks again. And once again, thanks for getting me onto the iRadio app. It's a beautiful thing. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. We're on all the other apps. If you guys know of any of the podcast streaming, uh, podcast players, whatever the apps that we're not on, let me know. Let me see if I can get us on it. Even if you don't listen to it, if you know of you, if you, or you don't listen to it regularly, I'd like to get on all of them if I could. So just so that we, we really cover our ground. So, but anyway, thanks again. Please share these episodes. Um, and also, uh, the Facebook page, Goodnight Freestyle, is open for business. So come on in. If there's anything that you like about this particular episode, I'll be posting this one into that page tomorrow. So make sure you go in there, ask some questions, or don't ask questions. You know, Tell me how you're feeling. Tell me <clears throat> how this thing made you feel. Did it make you think? You know, let's let's start a dialogue because you know what? I want to know you guys, and I hope you want to know me too. So we can do this together. We, we're, we're a part of an incredible genre, an incredible era. We're able to connect through all these magnificent features, all these podcasts and social medias and apps and YouTubes. And it's a beautiful thing, man. So let's take advantage of it, okay? All right, guys. So until tomorrow, good night, freestyle. Down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.